Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is Joel and today we're going to look at another concept called SBRF, uh, virtual routing and forwarding. And uh, I know this might not be very in line with the security dis um, discussion, but then we are going to use this in the VPN discussion which we'll have later, right? So I'm just going to um, quickly knock this one out so um, you guys know what is VRF, right? So virtual routing and forwarding. As you see on the screen, there's a simple topology. Um, you can um, assume that the routers R1 and R2 are more like a managed uh, services routers. You know, uh, they have been leased out to two of the companies here. Maybe let's call them the yellow company and the blue company, right? And uh, we have, uh, um, you know, the yellow company having th uh, two of their own routers, that is R3 and R4, and the blue company has uh, R5 and R6, right? And uh, this managed services are basically providing the connectivity between different sites of these companies, right? Now, R1 over here um, is one single router, right? And, um, um, you know, it's because it's one single router, there is always a possibility of, uh, you know, the routes, right? Uh, um, moving from uh, this network to this network. I mean, uh, the, the routes would normally be visible if you're using one single router. Uh, but then you need to understand that these are two separate companies. They wouldn't want their information to be shared with some other, you know, company, right? So they want some kind of an isolation. Now that's where VRFs comes into picture. So VRFs helps you to divide or split a router into multiple virtual routers, right? So in this case, R1 is kind of like split into two and one uh, part of it would be completely isolated from the other, right? And uh, uh, though it appears as one single router, uh, virtually, you know, we are basically dividing into, in them into two, right? And that way, uh, all of the routes of the 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 blue company over here would be kept isolated from the yellow one. Uh, the network is pretty simple. Um, we have like R1 and R2 doing the managed services, kind of a, kind of like my edge routers, providing the connectivity between two sites. R3 and R4 correspond to one particular company. R5 and 6 correspond to the other company. Um, you might be surprised that I have kept most of the IP addresses the same, right? You might ask me, hey, um, the IP address on this particular interface, Ethernet 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1 is the same. It is 10.10, .10, .10 .1, and here 1 as well. But that works just mainly because, you know, we have separate uh, virtual routers because there is an isolation. Um, you know, you, you can have identical IP addresses. I have intentionally kept it identical to show you the power of ERFs, right? So let's start with some basic configurations. To start with, um, that's that's the con start with the configuration on R1, right? So on R1, let's um, probably do the configuration of the VRFs to start with. So I'm on R1 router here. Let's put my VRF, right? So let's define two VRFs. One is my uh, customer A, right? And then my customer B. So I have two VRFs set up here, okay? Um, so that's done. Now let's do some basic uh, IP address uh, configurations on my R1, right? Let's do that. Let's knock that off. Let's go down here. Let's do that. Okay. So what do we do here? We uh, we are doing the configuration for Ethernet 0 slash 0. Um, we know that this interface is one particular interface can be present in only one virtual routing uh, or VRF, right? It can be present in only one VRF. So that is the uh, one prerequisite. So this particular interface, I'm going to give it to my customer A. So I have explicitly defined my VRF forwarding under that interface. And then I'm going ahead and dropping an IP address on that, right? The IP address is going to be 10.10.10.1, and that's here. Similarly, uh, it's the case with my um, serial interface over here. I have multiple serial interfaces. I'm gonna use one for my customer A and one for customer B. So two slash zero is basically use my customer A. I'm go dropping an IP address over that, 10.12.12.1. Right now, if you see the other interface 0 slash 1, which is towards the bottom, I'm still using the same IP address which I used earlier. It's pretty much the same, and it works because we are using VRFs. And I'm also using the same, in, um, you know, IP address on the other uh, serial interface, the bottom one over here. Um, it's also very much the same as the earlier one. Right now, let's drop this. There you go. We have done that. Okay, let's go down to my R2 and let's do that as well. Right, pretty much the same, whatever we did earlier. We are gonna do the VRF part and then we are gonna do the um, interface part, right? Let's drop the VRFs first. So the VRFs are gonna be same. I am having the same set of VRFs. One is a customer A and one is customer B, right? So let's finish that. 
There we go. We are done with the VRFs. Now uh, let's knock the IP addresses on the interface off, right? So let's do that. There we go. So for the IP addresses, we are um, going to do the same thing like we did earlier. Uh, just the IP addresses are going to be different. We are using a 10.20.20.2 over here. And uh, that's this network. We have 10.12 for my serial interface. Right. Similarly, I'm going to use uh, the same set of um, addresses, you know, on my um, um, interfaces towards uh, the blue company down as well. Right. I'm using the same. There you go. So I'm knocking the interfaces off. Um, let's. Uh, OK, so we have done that. The next part would be um, to do the interface configurations on my you know sites right r3 r4 r5 and r6 let's do it probably on r3 let's start with r3 okay so let's go to r3 let's do yeah so on my r3 i'm just gonna do um ip address configuration on my interface over here um which is going to be 10.10.10.3 .10 right i'm using dot three and i'm gonna also drop a loopback interface right just for testing the connectivity and all of that so I'm going to drop that 10.1.1.3 right so um, yeah that's good those are the only couple of things which I'm going to do on R3 similar is the case for uh, uh, R4 right I need to do the same thing on R4 let's do that there you go on R4 we have the Ethernet interface we have the loopback interface pretty good yeah uh, let's also do the same thing on R5, right? Let's go to R5. There you go. So on R5, we have again the same thing, Ethernet 0 slash 1 and loopback interface, right? Just the IP addresses are going to be different. I'm going to use 10.10.5 .10 here, dot .5, and for my loopback, I'm using in dot .5. Uh, pretty good. The last one being I'm going to do uh, the same configurations on my R6 right so on my r6 it's going to be again the pretty much the same we have ethernet right we have uh, um, ethernet interface uh, on my r6 0 slash 1 i also have my loopback interface right so that was pretty much it um, now what do we do next we are gonna need to so we have done all the ip address configuration all over the place we have defined our vrfs over here on r1 and r2 the only thing which is remaining is to put in some routing right we need some routing so let's do the routing uh, first for my sites right let's finish that off because it's going to be very simple so on my on my sites are basically r3 r4 and r5 r6 right so uh, if i have to do the routing i'm going to drop in a very simple routing configuration which is eigrp i'm going to use router eigrp 100 and no auto summary and then i'm going to use the network 10. 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 and that would basically cover everything right because this network the loopback network everything falls you know under the same thing so i'm going to use the um, uh, this one on all my routers on all r3 r4 r5 r6 it's going to be the same thing right so i'm doing this on r3 to start with there you go that's done let's do this on r4 as well that's good maybe on r5 yeah let's do it on r5 there you go. The last one is my R6. Wonderful. So we have done the routing uh, on all my sites. The only thing which is left is I need to do the routing on my um, edge routers here. That is my R1 and R2. Right. Okay. So now this is where it gets interesting. Um, right. So the routing over here. When you do the routing over here. Um, you can't do a very simple routing like how we did with EIGRP on my on my sites, right? Here, I need to define the routing explicitly um, for my company A and company B, or in this case, customer A and customer B, right? I need to explicitly divide and define two different uh, routing uh, instances under the same router, right? So that's very important because. Um, on a router we have um, um, in, in a similar in when you have a VRF running on a particular router you you have something called as a global routing table and then you have the VRF table as well right so um, if you want to um, uh, uh, ping a particular router uh, or if you want to ping a network which is part of the customer A 
right then i uh, then i need to tell my router to uh, use the routes from my uh, vrf table for this particular customer and not from the global routing table right that's very important so um, now let's see how we can do the routing on my um, r1 right let's pull that up sorry not this yeah so this is my r1 let's see all right this is the piece of config which would go in on my r1 right what what does it mean so we start with the router uh, ehrp1 uh, this number is very much local you can use anything right this doesn't matter uh, it's a local uh, process number right so that is fine but um, this is important right so we never used this command before this is the first time we are using so we are explicitly telling for the address family ipv4 uh, for this particular vrf which is customer a this is going to be my ehrp configuration right so the autonomous system 100 the number should match with my rest of the EIJRP numbers which I have used on, our, on, on my R3, R4, R5 and R6. So that's the reason I'm using the number 100 over here. Um, and then we have the no auto summary. And then we have the network configuration because everything here is like a 10 network, right? We Even the serial network is a 10 network. The interface is going top and down. Everything is, a, you know, is a 10 network, right? So this part of the configuration just corresponds to customer A, right? We are uh, explicitly telling right this uh, the the serial interface over here and the uh, ethernet interface over here right we are trying to advertise that so that would be my uh, vrf i mean that would be my routing towards my vrf customer a and we are going to do the same thing uh, on my customer b as well um, you know it might not be always identical it's identical here because the ip addresses which i have used is same but it might not be the case always right so this would be the config which would um, go under my um, r1 right so let's do that pretty good now we need to do the same configuration on my r2 as well right the other side right so let's do that um, if i'm not wrong everything remains the same here um, because we're talking routing and the address space is the same on both the sites um, so as a result it remains the same we start with address family put in the routing for um, you know uh, the customer a then we define the uh, routing for customer B, right? Great, so we drop this. Yeah, so I think now we have completed all the configuration. So now, now let's, it's uh, time to test whatever we have done, right? Let me clear the screen a bit so that I can, it's visible. There we go. So we are on my R1 now, right? Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see how the routing table looks, right? Show IP route will give you my routing table. There you go. Isn't this surprising? The routing table is empty. There is no routes. The reason being the global routing table, you know, um, has no routes, right? The, the routing protocol, whatever we have defined, we have defined it explicitly for the VRFs, right? So we need to use show ip route and then define your vrf which is your customer a there you go so for my customer a i do have my routing table and the routing table includes the 10.1 network right 10.1 you have the 10.2 10.2.2 2, which is right r3 r4 you have r3 r4 and then you have the 10.10 .10 network which is this one right and then you have the 10.12 network as well which is your serial interface over here right and then you have the 10.20 network which is this interface so everything inside this will now be reachable right so we can test that right let's see if we can ping from r3 to r4 right we could do that or we could we could first do this let's see from my r1 can i ping uh, let's start with uh, 10.1.1 1, 1.1 .1, uh, 1 .1, right i used dot one okay mm, okay I, it wasn't uh, dot one my bad it is supposed to be 10.1.3 dot dot if i'm not wrong yeah so yeah let me change that there you go yeah mm, did i do my loopback interface did i make a mistake let me see what is my loopback Okay, let's success rate is zero let's see 
uh, the configurations if I've used okay we used um, 10 dot okay so we have not done the loopback configuration okay so that's why um, I was not able let me let me do the loopback configurations okay I did not do the loopback configurations on this one so it would be um, let's go down here right um, let's do an interface loopback zero right and the IP address is going to be um, 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot let's use uh, what do we use here oh my bad okay sorry sorry yeah that's my bad um, let's see I, I was I was supposed to check here do show IP interface brief right so we have um, 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot 3 as my loopback interface and um, in my um, router I can see yeah exactly right so this is what I wanted to show when I do a ping um, towards my 10 dot 1 dot 1 uh, sorry 10 dot 1 dot 3 it doesn't work right it doesn't work because you need to use the VRF as well you need to tell the router when you're pinging which VRF you have to use so only if you use a VRF only then it works right so let's try that again now I'm going to use uh, um, 10.1.1.3 but let me use a VRF customer dash a okay I think it's better it's supposed to be this way so I need to define my VRF before VRF customer dash a and then there you go it works right so I need to define which VRF I'm trying to reach out to and that is the reason um, you know we are able to use uh, the same IP address right and um, uh, you, you can use um, identical IP address uh, because because you know the VRF is something which helps you to distinguish between them right we can try something different you want to probably ping uh, uh, the the company B we could do that right to ping your company B we'll have to do a VRF customer probably B and what is my IP address here it's going to be 10.1.1.5 if I'm not wrong right there you go it works right so from my r1 i was able to ping both my routers which are in two separate uh, you know two separate networks right now let's see if we have a connectivity from r3 to r4 right we can do that uh, because I, i'm on my r3 and r3 doesn't have a vrf i need not define the vrf while pinging so i can just do ping uh, 10.2.2.4 right this is this is the address which i'm trying to ping there you go that works as well right so uh, that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to show you let's uh, probably quickly have a look at uh, uh, the R2 side as well right let's see the look routing table how does it look let's do a show IP route um, and let's define let's see the other customer right customer B how does it look yeah there you go so for this customer which is customer B or my R2 I do have um, all the routes appearing right so I have my connectivity to 10.1 10.2 and all of that right so that is what I wanted to show you in this case that's this is the basic concept of VRF uh, honestly speaking this is something called as VRF light right because it doesn't involve BGP and MPLS and all of that it's uh, um, uh, it's a kind of like a smaller version small brother of VRF right um, so yeah in this entire session what we did was we tried to split this router say R1 and R2 into two so that uh, one part of the router is used only for um, the company or the customer A and the other one would be used only for customer B and there won't be any um, it's, it's completely isolated right so the routes of uh, this customer would not be shared with the other side and so on so it's, it it's basically helps you to isolate the router into multiple pieces when uh, you have something of this sort right. So yeah, thanks for watching.